Dave here. Today I have a tour of a Vernon Scope Brandon 92mm F7 Apochromat. from about 1987. And this telescope is a wonderfully symbolic telescope. Uh, it represents the sort of the inflection point between the old and the new. Um, up until this time, right around this time, uh, the unitron refractor, long focal ratio refractors, F15 refractors, uh, and telescopes of that type were considered to be the epitome, the best telescopes you could buy. This telescope represents the beginning of a new era in telescopes, where we have all of a sudden apochromats, triplets, and other ED apochromats. Apochromats have come along over the last uh, 30 years or so and have essentially replaced the long focal ratio refractors, although some would argue that there is still a very strong case to be made for the long focal ratio refractors. They have some uh, advantages, uh, but the advantages of a smaller telescope like this, this is a 94 millimeter f7, imagine something twice as long as this, how much more cumbersome that would be of course, and difficult to mount, um, difficult to store, etc, etc. All the things that come with a, a larger size. Uh, this telescope was designed and made by Roland Christen, who is famous for having developed the first very popular high-quality apochromats, modern era apochromats, triplets, uh, which have very reduced chromatic aberration, reduced color. The advantage of that is, of course, in a in an achromat of this focal length, the colors would be all over the rainbow. You would see, if you looked at something, you looked at a star, you would see all sorts of purples and yellows and greens and all sorts of crazy colors. And looking at the moon and, and so forth, I have a 6-inch F10, uh, a beautiful Jaeger's F10, beautiful lens, it's perfect optically, but it's an acromat. And when I look at the moon, I really become a little nauseated because of all the greenish colors. It shows a beautiful image, but you really, it's so distracting for me. Well, anyway, this scope is, um, it's very interesting because it's got some of the heritage of, of a unitron. As a matter of fact, much of this telescope is Unitron, or at least made by the same supplier that supplied Unitron parts. For example, this focuser is identical to a Unitron focuser, it's called a super focuser, from a high quality 4 inch or larger Unitron telescope. The cradle here is also identical to a Unitron 4 inch. The cell here, the objective cell, with the three distinctive uh, adjustment screws is identical to a Unitron 4-inch uh, telescope. The tube diameter here is identical uh, to a Unitron 4-inch. As a matter of fact, I've um, inserted a Unitron Super Unihex here. I'll show you that. This just slides right in there. Now this is not a 2-inch. This is something a little like 2.14 or something like that. Uh, slightly larger, one of those oddball Unitron sizes, but the Unitron Unihex fits in there perfectly. This is actually a Super Unihex. So the Super Unihex fits perfectly. As a matter of fact, it's not a bad way to use this scope. Um, using the Super Unihex, it has it features a 60mm uh, uh, Kellner eyepiece, this highly coveted 60mm eyepiece, which gives you a very low power. And in the case of a Unitron 4-inch F15, would give you a nice low power, reasonably low power for, uh, for using an F15 telescope. Well, at F7, a 60 millimeter provides an exit pupil of about 8.5 millimeters, which is gigantic. The average human eye, <coughs> even a young human, a good healthy human at a young age, can open to about 7 millimeters and accept an exit pupil of about 7 millimeters at max. 
Now, as an older person, as we get older, we cannot, our eyes don't function as well. So we cannot use all the light provided, certainly by an 8.5 millimeter or even a 7 millimeter. I shouldn't probably use anything more than a 4 or a 5 millimeter uh, exit pupil at, at my age. However, even with, at my age, with this 60 millimeter, I have a power here of about 10 power. And although I'm not using all of the aperture of the telescope, I can still see through it just fine. And as a matter of fact, this becomes a nice 50 millimeter finder, a, about a 10 by 50 finder. So this telescope functions as its own finder when you use a long focal ratio eyepiece like this. As a matter of fact, the Vernon Scope folks didn't even supply a finder with this. It, they, uh, I believe their argument was that it really didn't need one. And that's a pretty sound argument. You certainly don't need a finder if you use a long focal length eyepiece. Now, with the Super Unihex, of course, it's very nice because you can rotate the um, the Super Unihex and get a different magnification. I got the 60 millimeter right now. I can change to a 40 millimeter, which is still pretty low power for this scope. Go up to higher and higher powers, etc., with several different eyepieces. Select all sorts of different eyepieces of different magnifications. And believe me, this telescope will perform. This is not just a rich field, low power telescope. This telescope with that objective will perform at what they call stupid high powers, uh, absurdly high powers. You could crank this up to probably 200 power and the image would still be quite uh, adequate for viewing. Very, very powerful and crisp, beautiful objective with a, a beautiful image in this telescope. I hope you have enjoyed my tour of the Vernon Scope Brandon 92mm triplet by Roland Christen. Thank you very much.